Which is faster, 3D printing or resin casting? There's no one answer because there are so many variables involved, like what kind of equipment do you have? What kind of materials are you casting or printing with? How big is your object? What shape is your object? How long is it going to take to clean up? You get it. Every project has to be looked at as an individual thing. So the project is, what happens if we need to make a hundred of these? It's a really simple shape. It's easy to cast. It's easy to pour. Uh, it will print without any supports. It's got a nice flat bottom that makes it easy to pour and easy to print. I'm going to time everything out on my iPhone and the first step is going to be to make a mold of this guy, just a single gang mold. So let's start this business and figure out exactly how long it takes me to get set up and make a mold. Got out the cups. Let's see which one will work. Let's figure this out. Just want to do a simple cup mold. Will this work? Oh, I'm pretty lucky today. Feeling pretty lucky today. Okay, that's the cup we need. We don't need any of these other cups. So that was just a pure lucky guess. We'll take it. Okay, now we got the cup. Let's plug all our machinery in. Not going to hurry, just going to work at my normal pace, which isn't all that fast. I've come to realize that if I show you every step being timed on camera, this video is going to be <laughs> it's going to be hours long. Can't have that. So uh, just I got the guy glued into the cup and I got the rubber dispensed and metered out. Of course, I will be de-airing the rubber in the vacuum chamber. And then let's get pouring from the bottom up, just like always. I started with the print, but that means I already had the digital model. Now all I needed to do was bring it into the slicer. I dropped it into Chitu box and arranged three of them on the build plate. I wasted several minutes here because I was really hoping to be able to fit four on there, but I ultimately couldn't, so I just wound up printing three. I was so pleased that the prints came out as well as they did. I find that the easiest way to get them off the build plate is to whack them with a stick. <laughs> Time for their alcohol bath, and I find that it's really effective with small pieces like this to scrub them with a soft brush. It's very good at removing the uncured resin, and it doesn't leave any marks or any problems with the surface finish of the models. A second rinse in clean alcohol, and they are ready to go. I poured this mold yesterday. It's rock hard and ready to go. Let's cut it open. You can see where I'm going to. I'm going down to that arm right there. See that? Can I see that? I'm going down to that arm. I want to cut through it. I can't just cut past it. I need to cut through it. Okay, now there it's cut down. That's a simple enough matter just to cut it far enough to release the part. The less we cut, the less we clean later, and especially in a production pouring. Is that enough to get it out of there? Might be, yep, might be just enough. Not very much cut needed here to get it out, I hope. Yep, coming right out. Look at that, there it is. Beauteous. All right, well, it looks super good. Super clean little mold, and boy, uh, nice invisible parting lines. Note the invisible parting lines, very little to clean up. So now we knot the band to make it fit the mold a little better, a little tighter. Boy, I tell you what, it's, it's so little cut and so simple. I think that's all we're going to need to hold that thing together. All right, let's go pour some resin. All right, mixed up a batch of resin. Beautiful. And let's pour it. I don't think we need a rocket roller to do anything else. I think it's just going to fill. All right. Looks pretty good. Here we go. In the tank we go. While we wait for the resin to cure, let's design a little mold case, shall we? All right, let's see how close I came. Nice. Beauteous. 
these pieces of wood here front and back just lock the parts of the case together to keep them from sliding around makes it easier to wax. I got the box assembled and I got the piece of sticky wax to the bottom. At this point in the project, we can estimate how long it's going to take to make the cast versions versus the printed versions. The first thing we can say for sure is that it takes a lot more upfront work to make cast resin versions because you have to make the molds. And I added up all the steps to making the molds and uh, came to an estimate of about an hour total time for making this mold and maybe an hour and a half for making the box mold. Those are pretty heavily padded estimates. My actual time was less, but I have learned that uh, anytime you estimate something, you better double it and add 10% to really have a realistic chance of being close to what it'll actually take you to do this stuff in production. But it's when you have the molds made and you get to the actual production of the pieces that there is a huge difference in speed. Each one of these parts took an hour and 14 minutes to print. With this three gang mold, I can cycle it twice per hour. That means I can make six castings per hour compared to one printing for every hour and 14 minutes. In fact, when I'm pouring pieces in production, I like to have like 10 cavities or as, at least as many as six or eight cavities per mold. And by the way, if you want to watch me do a full production thing from start to finish, I'll link to those videos down below. So for this mold, I would make two or three more of these molds. So I'd have a total of six or even nine cavities. And with that many, for instance, if I had six, ca if I had six cavities and could cycle them twice an hour, so 12 an hour, in a single workday, eight and a half hours, I could produce 100 castings. That's enormously faster if I had 18 molds. In other words, if I made three of these molds where I had nine cavities so I could cast 18 an hour, because remember, I can cycle each mold twice in an hour, every half an hour. I could do the entire 100 casting job in five and a half hours. This is why nobody operates a printer and makes any money. If you're gonna do printing, you're gonna have a print farm because you're gonna have to have a lot of machines running simultaneously to come close to the casting rate that you can reach with resin casting. The point of this video is that I think it's very useful to do time and motion studies because if you do them, you will find out exactly how much time does it take how much materials does it take? It probably matters more if you're doing it for money because you better be doing time and motion studies if you're doing it for money because you really need to know what your hourly rate is, what your labor rate is, what your materials cost. Everything all has to go, it all has to work or you're not gonna make any money. But if you're just a hobbyist, still it's useful to know how long does something take? What if you get involved with something? Say, hey, can you make a bunch of these for our club or something? And you go, yeah, I'll do it for you. And then you find out, oh my God, it's just going to be this humongous amount of work. Either way, time and motion studies can be really useful and instructive. And the more you do them, the more you get to be able to do a seat of the pants estimating that's usually pretty accurate. Hey, I hope you liked this video. If you did, watch this video next or go down to the links below where you can watch me do complete projects from start to finish. I hope you had fun. I hope you learned something. I will see you next week. Another printer came in today. I think I'm good on printers for now.